Welcome to GFT, Galactic Figure Talk, a podcast about Star Wars and Star Wars action figure collecting. Awesome, yeah! The reason they're three and three quarter inches tall is because the first mock-up figures that I made were Fisher Price Adventure People. <laughs> Body and carbonite forever high solo. Not so fast. Ah. We finally launched six inch when I felt the time was right. We needed a new spark. We started selling all of the action figures through the fan club, and uh, our most successful was the Cantina Band. That was enormously one of the best selling items we've ever sold to the fan club. I used my nephew as a hand model on the Wampa box. He's the one with the little hand that's in there. It's Kenner's new Star Wars action figures. Now, welcome your host, Chris B. Welcome to another episode of GFT, Galactic Figure Talk. My name is Chris B, and this episode is about the announcement for the Saga Museum. Like I just mentioned in the introduction, this episode is all about the Saga Museum. And it was announced during the Rancho Obi-Wan Gala fundraiser this past Saturday here in Seattle that super collectors Gus Lopez, Duncan Jenkins, Lisa Stevens and Vic Wirtz are going to combine their incredible collections with the collection of Steve Sansweet's Rancho Obi-Wan to create a brand new museum called the Saga Museum, which is going to be available to the public in a yet to be determined location. What an amazing announcement. I was so happy to be in the room when this announcement was made. So I wanna say thank you to Steve Sandsweet for having me out and to Dave Perry for organizing the whole thing. So without further ado, I'm gonna play you guys the promo video slash audio for your podcast listeners when the announcement was made. No other franchise in history has touched so many people across the planet and connected them under a common love. My eyes just got wide and I was like, oh my God, this is like nothing I'd ever seen before. Watching movies is never the same again. Growing up with a single mom, Harrison Ford was a role model for me. Surrogate father, if you will. We all had that Luke Skywalker. We all had the R2-D2. And we remember playing with Millennium Falcon. It's a commonality. There are so many people who are attracted to Star Wars' story, the mythology, and the character. It really binds us all together. I've dedicated the better part of my adult life to helping build the Star Wars community. But what I have given it, it has given me back far more. I never thought I'd live in a Star Wars museum. Would never have imagined that direction for myself. I didn't really know that Star Wars was that much of a thing until I visited Rancho Obi-Wan. Steven Sansweet has been called a master collector of Star Wars memorabilia. He is the proud owner of the largest collection outside of the Lucasfilm archives. There were a lot of things here. Lots and lots and lots of things. Well, it's true, I'm a completist. That means everything that's out there, I want one of. When I started, I had a feeling that someday it would become a behemoth, but I've never looked back. When I first got here, the whole museum was just an unfinished barn being used as a storage unit. We brought together volunteers, rearranged, we built out another building, added some interactive elements, and opened up the museum for the world. Rancho Obi-Wan. But I'm not the only collector out there. When I started out, it was really about filling in the gaps in my collection when I was a kid. And it just snowballed from there. We've spent decades amassing these things. We built our house to house collectibles as much to house ourselves. I 
I'm the Jawa. I'm the little guy that's going around collecting every little piece of scrap that I can and putting it all together and hoping somewhere somebody else is going to find some interest in it. Combined, these collectors have over one and a half million pieces. I was having these conversations with other collectors and the same question kept coming up. What happens to these collections when we're gone? I used to joke that I would be laid out inside the museum and have it imploded around me. Well, that's not quite what I wanted for my legacy. It'd be nice if this went on to do something bigger. Wouldn't it be cool if we got the best of the best of Star Wars collections and built one unmatchable Star Wars museum? We're bringing together four of the largest Star Wars collections in the world to make one giant collection that will be by far the biggest Star Wars collection in the world. What we're talking about is building the Jedi Temple for Star Wars relics. This will be a place of community building and learning where people can come from all over the world and geek out together. We want hundreds of thousands of people to be able to see these collections. Fans opening their own museum on the surface, yeah, it's kind of bonkers. Doing a new museum, it's a big lift. To bring these collections together, we need to build a team, we need a location, and we need to create educational programs. The logistics are daunting. For these four collectors, they're thinking beyond themselves. They want to create a legacy around all the cultural artifacts that they've gathered over the years. This isn't about us. It's about the stories that the objects have to tell. As first-generation Star Wars fans, it's up to us to preserve this legacy. Star Wars is forever. It turns the light on. It's bigger than all of us. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. Phantom is like life. It finds a way. This is going to be a world-class museum. The amount of creativity this franchise has inspired, it's touched people all over the world. That legacy continues, and it will continue for generations. Today, we are sharing this dream with you and asking for your help to make it a reality. The Saga Museum of Star Wars Memorabilia. Join us on our journey to preserve these collections for future generations. So this was the video that was played on stage right after the announcement and uh, it just blew everyone away because we knew going into the gala that there was going to be one big announcement coming and quite honestly I talked to a bunch of people early on to find out what it might be and nobody really knew. I kind of expected for Steve to come out and say that he's going to, you know, retire and maybe take a step back from Red show obi-wan and oh boy was i wrong no um him stepping away from star wars or collecting star wars and running the museum uh, -uh is not going to happen quite the contrary actually he is teaming up with four other star wars collectors who have amazing collections themselves to create an even bigger museum than rancho obi-wan and yeah, uh, it was just uh, amazing to uh, be in the room when this was announced with a bunch of other collectors who had flown in specifically for this event. And um, yeah, I mean, it was absolutely amazing. So let me walk you through what my evening was like attending the Rancho Obi-Wan fundraiser. First of all, it was held at the Mopop Museum here in downtown Seattle, which is an amazing location. It's right downtown Seattle. It's located right next to the Space Needle. And if you're in the uh, city center in Seattle, you can hop on the monorail, which will take you over to the Space Needle. And while you're driving, I mean, the, the monorail takes you through the Mopop building right so it's a pretty cool location uh the mopop is basically a museum dedicated to pop culture stuff so lots of music lots of movie stuff rotating exhibits 
And they also have a section within the museum that's dedicated to sci-fi, and it's the sci-fi museum, basically. And my understanding is that Paul Allen, the co-founder of Microsoft, had a big hand in creating the museum, and a lot of his items from his personal collection are on display inside the sci-fi museum. He was apparently a huge geek like <laughs> like all of us. And uh, he had a thing for movie props. And so a lot of the cool items are on display at, uh, at the Mopop. So the location itself was great. And for private events like the Rancho Obi-Wan fundraiser, uh, they have the Sky Church is what it's called, where there's a, it's a big room that has a huge ceiling, big stage. And um, that's where it was basically held. And so you have a side entrance to get in. And when I got there, the 501st was there doing a little bit of crowd control and, of course, photo ops. And, yeah, as soon as I walked in, I was greeted by a whole bunch of local collectors here from Solek who were helping out at the event. And I do want to give a shout out to Amy, who's awesome every time I see her. She's involved in so many things here locally always helping out and I also want to give a shout out to Kurt Hanks who yet again designed the poster for Rancho Obi-Wan for this specific event and he does such an amazing job every single time and uh, if you haven't seen it yet I'm sure you've seen it if you follow galacticfigures.com you should have seen it by now but he basically has the Seattle skyline with the with the space needle on it and then it features the awesome guitar that was also auctioned off at the event uh, which is a Power of the Force 2 Millennium Falcon toy uh, made into a guitar, which is uh, pretty awesome. Um, so anyways, I walk in and I you know, got my badge and everything, walked upstairs to check out all the auction items that you could win during the fundraiser, and there were just some amazing items there. Uh, there are some custom action figures. I saw the skeletons of uh, Amperu and Uncle Owen on Kenner style card bags, which was cool. Uh, they had a Kenner Rancor in box. But there were also some absolutely stunning items. Uh, there are some pre production items from the movies signed by John Dykstra, for example. They also had the Gentle Giant Death Trooper helmet up for auction which was exclusively made available through nissan so you had to purchase a thirty thousand or forty thousand dollar car in order to get one of those exclusive gentle giant helmets i think that was around the time when rogue one came out so back in 2016 2017 uh and that helmet i think it was limited to around 700 or something and yeah that was one of the auction items i saw quite a few ralph Macquarie posters there and books and there was it was just an amazing array of items that you could win there so yeah I mean looking at those items that they had there you knew instantly this had to be something that had to do with Rancho Obi-Wan because where else do you get to see such rarities right so yeah I mean it was amazing so I walk in it was very quick Five of First was there local solid collectors checked out the auction items walked into the main room and said hi to a whole bunch of collectors who had flown in from uh, other places even internationally some people from Canada were there and it was really great to see a lot of familiar faces that you typically don't get to see unless there is a Star Wars celebration or some sort of huge collector's event. So it was really cool. And I kind of made my way to the other side of the room where they had set up this booth. And you could walk into this tiny room and stand up on a pedestal. And they gave you either a lightsaber or a guitar. And then they have a camera rotate around you in 360. And, you know, they, they speed it up. They slow it down. They zoom in on you. And uh, it makes for a pretty cool reel for Instagram, you know. Um, so, yeah, you could do that. That was a lot of fun. But then they also had the sci-fi museum or the sci-fi section of the Mopop open. So you could go downstairs and look at the entire sci-fi museum. And that by itself was absolutely amazing. Um, there are some uh, great uh, items from Star Wars on display. Uh, from Gus Lopez's collection currently, the Hoth Rebel Trooper is something you can check out there from The Empire Strikes Back, so the original costume. I might be wrong about this, but I do think that this is actually the exact same outfit that the trooper wore 
which Kenner ended up using for the action figure card back. So that's the exact costume that's on display. Also, Gus has the stop motion animatronic on display of the Han Solo riding the Tauntaun. So that's the uh, the item that they used to do the stop motion technique. And you guys remember the discussion about whether Han Solo wore a blue coat or a brown coat in The Empire Strikes Back? Well, the coat for the stop motion animatronic here is clearly blue, okay? And remember the uh, Hoth Han jacket that was touring around with the Star Wars costume exhibition for a while? That was clearly brown. So that's where that kind of comes from. You know, the, the brown, the blue, you know, I, from where I'm sitting, it was clearly both, right? Because you have the, uh, the life-size prop that Harrison Ford wore, it was brown. But here you have the animatronic that they use for the stop motion. Uh, and that's clearly blue. So anyways, that's on display at the Mopop Museum that you can check out. And so I walked around and yeah, it was great. I mean, they have all kinds of sci-fi stuff down there. There's an original uh, stunt proton pack from Ghostbusters. And there's a Stormtrooper helmet down there. A Darth Vader lightsaber hilt. And yeah, just great stuff. But that's not why I was there for, right? So I went back upstairs and uh, Mark Daniel, who you might know, he was the MC for the event. Uh, he's done a lot of the Star Wars celebrations, if not almost all of them, maybe not the first one in 1999. But uh, if you've been to Star Wars celebrations recently in the last 10 years or so, you've probably seen him. Uh, work the crowd and be the host on stage together with uh, DJ Elliot. So he was there doing a great job and he's a total pro, you know, at hosting stuff. So yeah, I mean, it was amazing. So anyways, uh, he started interviewing people on stage and Steve came on stage and talked about Rancho Obi-Wan and then they brought up Gus Lopez after a while. They brought up Duncan Jenkins, Vic Wirtz and Lisa Stevens and then the bombshell announcement happened basically that they're going to combine their collections and yeah it was just a great evening overall with a lot of cool people in attendance who have a deep love for collecting star wars now i talked to steve and gus and duncan afterwards after the announcement and steve mentioned that they're currently looking at eight different cities they're going to do you know, like little pop-up shops here and there to kind of test the uh, test the engagement, I guess, to see what might be a good fit for a museum like that. I know a lot of people I talked to in attendance suggested the Bay Area would be the perfect match. Not only is Rancho Obi-Wan not far from there already, but there's also this rich history with George Lucas himself, you know, being in the Bay Area. And so you know that might make the most sense it wouldn't also be that far away from lucasfilm and so who knows but that's what they'll be working on for the next two years they kind of have to figure out where they want to open it um, what space to move into and how this is going to fit into the local communities and it's just a lot of work left for them to do but the Saga Museum is something that uh, you will be hearing a lot about in the coming months and years. And this is something, just like Rancho Obi-Wan, that is part of... I mean, if you collect Star Wars, there is no way of getting around the Saga Museum in the future. And let's be honest here, how cool is it that there are those five collectors who are so dedicated to this hobby that they want to preserve this for future generations and have one place you can go to so that people can learn about what it was like in the early days of Star Wars when uh, Star Wars stuff came out. So my personal hope is of course a section dedicated to Star Wars action figures only maybe with some cool diorama pieces that would be amazing to see. I can also totally picture a section that looks like Toys R Us back in the days with just stacks and stacks and stacks of of uh, box Kenner toys. That would be so cool um, because where else can you see something like that nowadays, right? Um, so uh, yeah, again, I would love to see that, but that's just four or five years down the road. 
And, uh, you know, I'll be reporting back on the progress. But, I mean, it really feels like that's the right move to do. I mean, what are you going to do if you have such a massive collection and, I mean, you're not getting any younger? What's going to happen to all the uh, amazing collectibles that you've acquired over the years? Are they just going to get auctioned off once you've passed on? And this way, the public gets to enjoy it. Now, a couple of things I wanted to mention about the swag that was at the fundraiser. They did hand out a poster, uh, which was called Coming to Your Galaxy. It's based on the uh, one of the original teaser posters for Star Wars back in the 70s, uh, which looks really cool. And it's actually a double-sided poster because on the back side, it has Kurt's amazing poster for the fundraiser event on it. And if you flip it around, it has the uh, Coming to Your Galaxy, the Saga Museum poster, basically. It was a free handout at the show. But if you wanted to get your own, you could go to the Rancho Obi-Wan website. And if you donate $100, uh, they'll send you a poster. So that's the earliest swag that you can get. Um, there's also a t-shirt that they sold at the show for the Saga Museum. And my understanding is that that was only exclusive to the event. I'm not sure if that's going to pop up on the Rancho Obi-Wan website at some point. But my understanding was that it was only available through the fundraiser. And there was also a booklet which they handed out which talks about Rancho Obi-Wan and the accomplishments over all the years that they've had. Plus they're also talking about the mission for the Saga Museum and what they envision it to be. And they're talking about the next two years, how they're going to scout for a location. And um, that's basically the third item that you could get uh, based on the Saga Museum already. And that by itself is a collectible for the Saga Museum. So that's also already out there and it was given out for free during the event. They did say that Rancho Obi-Wan is going to keep operating normally until the Saga Museum opens. So if you wanted to catch a glimpse at Steve Sansweet's collection before it is being transitioned into the Saga Museum, then uh, you should look into getting a tour at Rancho Obi-Wan. I'll put the link to uh, the website into the podcast description, of course. And yeah, I mean, that's your chance to uh, tour the museum before it's gone, basically. Now, I have to say, and that's more for the local collector scene listening to the podcast, I do think it's also... It's bittersweet because it's really nice to see Gus and Vic and Lisa also kind of moving on to the next step and going public with their collections. At the same time, I feel like it's going to be a pretty big loss to the Seattle collecting community because there was just a lot of knowledge up here. And Gus has been such an integral part specifically educating people here locally, including myself and, you know, pretty much everyone who's involved here with collecting. And Seattle has always been this hotspot for Star Wars collecting activity over the years. And I think Gus has just been playing a, an, an instrumental part in this. I mean, every time we're over at his place, he's got stories to share about what he's picked up lately, how he got it. He always had some background info on some of the items. And over the years, I mean, we're talking about like two decades at this point, us hanging out with Gus and, and visiting his place uh, just kind of, a, you know, acquired a, a knowledge. I think that goes beyond uh, just regular collectors buying stuff at Target stores, you know. So I feel like that's also going to be lost because those collections, if they decide to move on to a different city, are, it's going to be lost. It's going to be different because a lot of times, you know, when he would, you know, pick up an item uh, and, and share stories about it or some concept sketches that he picked up or, you know, how he how he flew down to California to pick up some Endor bunker grenades, <laughs> you know, those kinds of stories. Uh, those are the stories that we kind of carried with us and then we, you know, if, at the next Star Wars meeting at somebody else's place, um, or at the next get together, we would kind of pick up on those conversations and just continue them. And so it was just a lot of knowledge here around some of the props and especially the Star Wars action figure stuff. Um, he's got so many prototypes and, and so much knowledge that he has that he's shared with us over the years that I feel like, um, uh, yeah, it's it's going to change here in Seattle. And uh, that's bittersweet because, I mean, it's always been 
really special to go over to Gus's place and uh, check out his collection. But anyways, that's where I'm going to uh, wrap up this episode of Galactic Figure Talk. Uh, to sum it up again, the Rancho Obi-Wan fundraiser at the Mopop here in Seattle was amazing. I hope that uh, if Rancho Obi-Wan continues the gala events in the future, or even if the Saga Museum uh, is going to start doing those gala events, I hope that uh, you consider attending. It's a wonderful way to connect with uh, other collectors who are equally passionate about this stuff than yourself. And it was just a great evening. All right, so that's where I'm going to wrap up this episode of GFT Galactic Figure Talk, though. I mean, it's time that we're going to start talking about Star Wars action figures. There is a ton of stuff to discuss. I actually think that Hasbro has a few announcements up their sleeves. I know New York Comic Con is coming up where they are going to have reveals. I know that there is also going to be a Hasbro breakfast in New York. Unfortunately, I am unable to attend and fly over there this time. Um, and it feels like the uh, panel that they're going to hold in New York uh, this time is a mixed panel where they're going to talk about Ghostbusters a lot. Apparently, they're going to reveal the new HasLab there. Um, but there's also going to be some Marvel news mixed in with the Star Wars stuff. So it's not just going to be Star Wars only. Otherwise, I would have considered flying over there and covering the event. Um, so I don't know exactly how much news we're going to get out of it. But at some point, they will have to start talking about the skeleton crew as well. Uh, if you check the uh, Galactic Figures Instagram account, you can see some of the leaked images of some Black Series Skeleton Crew figures already, which look really cool. Um, the uh, Max Rebo uh, figure, uh, aka Neil, the, the young Ortolan figure, uh, looks really cool. I mean, come on, an elephant in uh, an overall with suspenders. Uh, that's as cute as it gets and as quirky as it gets for Star Wars. I'm all here for it. So this is really cool. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they have in uh, store for us for when it comes to the skeleton crew. But again, uh, check back for another episode of GFT Galactic Figure Talk soon. And then we're going to dive into some Star Wars action figure talk. Thank you guys for listening. Hit the five star review, please, if you have a second. It does help the show. It helps me to stay motivated and keep putting those episodes out for you guys for free. So thank you for listening, and I'll catch you on the next one. It's a wrap for this episode, but the next one is just around the corner, so make sure to subscribe. Meanwhile, have fun browsing over 4,000 Star Wars figures on galacticfigures.com, the Star Wars action figure database. The website helps you look up and identify Star Wars figures. Leave your own figure reviews in the comments or check out photo galleries, figure info, news, press releases, or event coverage from New York Toy Fair and Star Wars celebrations. Thanks for listening. Check the links in the description and remember to subscribe. Join us on our journey to preserve these collections for future generations.